Tim, you were on a program that I was listening to, and you said something that was particularly interesting to me that I feel like was pretty compelling, and it was, has to do with seeing Mary as the sort of new Ark of the Covenant. Yes. And in that talk, you, you lean heavily on Athanasius, saying, you know, he really helps yes. refine that, articulate it in a, in a really robust way. I've been trying to do my homework on that, and I'm having a hard time finding where Athanasius says this. Great question, my friend. In particular, with St. Athanasius, what you're looking for is found in a homily of the papyrus of Turin. It's an ancient homily of St. Athanasius. So the title of the work is Homily of the Papyrus of Turin. And you can find it as well in a book that I used in my book by, I believe it's Luigi Gambaro. It's called Mary and the Fathers of the Church. And he too, in fact, he has more quotes than I do because I was tackling everything. And so I, I didn't cite as many examples from the fathers as he does. So you might want to get that as well. Luigi Gambaro, Mary and the Fathers of the Church. It's on page 107 there. But Athanasius is writing in 360 AD. And what you, you find, and you have earlier examples than, than Athanasius, that there is a sort of development in understanding of Mary as the Ark. Sometimes you have, for example, St. Hippolytus, writing in 190 A.D., when he talks about Mary as the Ark of the Covenant, he has a different sort of take in that he kind of includes Jesus and Mary in the Ark itself. And this, this would kind of fall out of favor, and Mary would be seen uniquely as the Ark of the Covenant, but I think it's really cool that St. Hippolytus, and I quote that as well in the book, says, Now the Lord was without sin being in his human nature from incorruptible wood, that is, from the virgin, and being sheathed, as it were, with pure gold of the word within and of the spirit without. So notice in his analogy, the Ark of the Covenant is said to be the humanity of Christ, which bore divinity. But notice the intimate connection of the Ark to Mary. She is the incorruptible wood from which the Ark is constructed, according to St. Hippolytus. It, of course, it would be this wood that would carry the holy objects inside. But like with a lot of the images of our faith, over time they develop, and you have, you know, by the time and even before Athanasius, it becomes more clear that Mary is simply the Ark of the Covenant, and Jesus is the fulfillment of those three types, as you know from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4, the three types of Jesus, the ten words, you know, Dabar, the, the ten commandments, Aaron's rod, and a sample of the manna. Those are all three types. We see the fulfillment in the New Testament, Aaron the high priest, Jesus is our high priest, Hebrews 3.1. The manna, Jesus is the fulfillment, John chapter 6. Where is that around? Uh, I want to say 32. It's right around there. And the 10 words, of course, Jesus is the word made flesh. So at any rate, St. Athanasius, writing in 360, again from his homily of the Papyrus of Turin, writes, O noble virgin, truly you are greater than any other greatness. O dwelling place of God the Word, to whom among all creatures shall I compare you? O virgin, you are greater than them all. O ark of the new covenant, clothed with purity instead of gold, you are the ark in which is found the golden vessel containing the true manna, that is, the flesh in which divinity resides. If I say that the angels and archangels are great, but you are greater than them all. For the angels and archangels serve with trembling the one who dwells in your womb, and they dare not speak in his presence while you speak to him freely. So notice you know, that she is the Ark of the Covenant. And for our other listeners, as well as you, my brother, you know from the Old Testament, God himself personally designed the Ark of the Covenant in Exodus 25. 
But what folks don't realize, especially many of our Protestant friends, is what God had in mind ultimately was not a wooden box overlain with gold. He had in mind the true ark of the new covenant who would contain within her womb the Lord God creator of the universe incarnate. And so we think as Catholics, if God willed that the old ark should be pure and untouched by sinful man, as we've seen, you know, how much more pure would the new ark be considering that the type was only a shadow in comparison with its fulfillment. I'm reading from my book there that you're going to get on pages 92 and 93, but this has application beyond just the obvious, you know, the purity of the Immaculate Conception, but also the Assumption, because Revelation uh, chapter 11, verse 19, we see that John sees in heaven the temple, which is obviously not that massive, you know, huge temple that took 46 years to build, according to John chapter 2. Rather, the true temple of the New Testament is, according to Revelation 19.22, the Lamb. I saw there was no temple in heaven, but it, the temple is God Almighty and the Lamb. And we know that in John chapter 2, prophetically, when Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up again. They said, how in the world are you going to you're going to destroy this temple and that took 46 years to build and raise it up in three days. And the, the scripture says the temple he spoke of was the temple of his body. His body is the true temple that is in heaven, right? And so there we see in Revelation 11:19, his body and what's there with it, but the Ark of the Covenant that dwells in the temple. Oh, well, what's the Ark of the Covenant, right? Is it that old wooden box that we were just talking about, Dalton? Of course not. That old wooden box is nowhere to be found any longer, and maybe it's somewhere in Ethiopia, or who, but we basically don't care. I mean, it would be a great find archaeologically to find the old ark, but we've got the new ark, my friend, Dalton, and it is the Blessed Mother. So when he sees the Ark of the Covenant in heaven, what does he see? Mary, and not just Mary, but her body. She is bodily present. And that leads right into chapter 12, verse 1, the very next verse. It's a shame that the ancient scholars separated Revelation eleven nineteen 19 from 12, 1, because really they go together. But in 12, 1, we see the woman clothed with the sun on her head, a crown of 12 uh, stars under her feet, the moon. She's there bodily. So the Ark of the Covenant is this glorious woman. 